Live. This is the Ira Fistel Show. To speak with Ira from anywhere in America, call toll-free 888-822-8255. That's 888-822-TALK. Now, here's Ira Fistel. 14 minutes before the hour. I uh, just want to tell you, before we take more calls, which we're going to do in just a moment, uh, I want to tell you about some other programs coming up. On Friday night, tomorrow night, it'll be Friday night fun show night, and on the program tomorrow night, we are pleased to have in the studio Roger Kahn, one of America's finest writers. I was reading some of his new book, The Head Game, today. This man writes some of the most lyric, most beautiful, most luminous prose anybody in America writes today. I think he is almost in a class by himself in that sense. And uh, we're going to have Roger Kahn in the studio tomorrow night, and I'm looking forward very, very much to having him on the air with me tomorrow night because uh, this is a great writer. And we're going to talk about his writing and, of course, all the things he writes about. And what he's writing about in this particular book is pitching, the art of pitching. Um, Roger Kahn, of course, is also the author of The Boys of Summer, which was written some years ago. Uh, another beautiful and wonderful book, but... Uh, I'm really looking forward to talking with him about his ability to use the English language. He's an outstanding writer. That will be tomorrow night. On uh, Monday night, I will not be on the air because it is the holiday of Yom Kippur. Uh, I think, I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I think we're going to have a uh, Best of Ira Fistel show that night. It'll be tapes. Um, Tuesday, October 10th, the name dame, Marianna Korwitz, will talk about the influence of names on personality and on life should be interesting. Um, on, let's see, Thursday the 12th, Yolanda Nava, Latino culture in the United States, will be our guest. And of course, we'll also talk with uh, Ellen Ratner in the first part of the program on Thursday, as we're doing every Thursday um, before the election. Friday night, October 13th, another outstanding writer on a Friday night fun show. And that night it will be Ann Perry, possibly the world's finest mystery writer, and certainly one of the world's best, best mystery writers at this point. She lives in a little... Sc tiny town, I think, in Scotland, in the British Isles, but she'll be here in in, uh, Los in Southern California, I guess in Los Angeles, and we will have her on the air on Friday the 13th of October. Then the following week, uh, we continue our celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. Carolina Garcia Aquilera will talk about the Cuban-American population in Miami, the Cuban-Americans. Uh, she's written a book called, um, I can't read my own writing. <laughs> Havana Heat. Havana Heat about the Cuban Americans in Miami. And that'll be on the 18th of October. And on the 19th, Thursday the 19th, which is, I guess, two weeks from now, we're going to have Murray Sperber, professor at, of English at Indiana University. And he has written a new book called Bread and Circus What Big Time Athletics is Doing to American Education. And so that's on uh, the 19th of October. And on the 23rd, Monday night, the 23rd, we'll do our next reading session. Uh, I'm going to teach Life on the Mississippi by Mark Twain, chapters 1 to 21. Life on the Mississippi, chapters 1 to 21, and that will be on Monday night, the 23rd of October. And on Thursday night, the 26th of October, Ambassador William Vanden Heuvel will talk about the future of freedom in Russia. Crucial, crucial subject. All this coming up, and I'm, I'm Ira Costello, so stay with us every night because something... Something pretty good happens almost every night around here. All right, Dorothy, hi, you're on the air. Yes, good evening. I have a few things that I'd like to talk about. First of all, what is Corky's husband's name? Mike Stoller. Oh, that's right. I know you. I heard uh, him when he was on a few months ago or when she was on. Okay. Now, I also want to mention that regarding uh, one person shows, most of the time they're on serious subjects. And this one, fully committed, is certainly uh, lighthearted. Even though, <clears throat> even though I haven't seen it yet, but I hope to. Well, it is very lighthearted. It's a story of a young man who is <laughs> working in a, shall we say, overly pretentious, overbooked New York restaurant, and he has to deal with the chef, and he has to deal with the maitre d', and he has to deal with the customers trying to get uh, tables and trying to get special things, the special, uh, you know, special menus, and everything. And he's driven practically crazy and uh, it's based on the experiences of the the playwright and the leading actor who actually did work in restaurants like this in new york well you know they've had wonderful write-ups the calendar a few weeks yeah. ago also devoted an entire article to that and this person has been interviewed on different uh radio programs yeah. i know i have to take a break here we'll come right back to you dorothy 
Stay with us. It's uh, nine minutes before the hour. Dorothy, you'll be back, and so will I. I'm R.F. Estelle. Friends, it's Larry King. Since having open heart surgery, I've followed a program that includes a garlic brand garlic tablet every day. As you may know, in many studies, the all-natural herb garlic has been proven to lower cholesterol levels and support good cardiovascular health. All garlic products aren't the same. For me, it's odor-free garlic from SunSource, America's number one selling garlic supplement. With odorless garlic, you only take one tablet daily. Garlic, as in unique, it is cholesterol's natural enemy. Coast to Coast, welcome to the Isle Fistel Show. To get in on the conversation, call us toll free at 888-822-8255. That's 888-822-TALK. Now, here's Ira Fistel. And the time is seven minutes after the hour. Good morning, wherever you are in the United States. Let's talk. I'm Ira Fistel. 888-822-8255 is the telephone number. And on the line is Steve, so let's get to his call right now. Good morning, Steve. Hi, Ira. How are you? Good, thank you. What's up? Um, I was just calling about the debate. Um, I felt that uh, Lieberman was a lot more uh, relaxed than any of the other three men that have uh, been in any of these debates. Um, I felt that his answers were um, uh, were were concise, and he looked and and, and it didn't look re rehearsed at all. His answers or his uh -huh. responses. Well, I think uh, they probably were. And I think also Cheney's were. I mean, these, these guys had really studied for this thing. But uh, it's interesting to me that you felt that Lieberman came off as more relaxed. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. And now, were you watching on TV or listening on radio? I was watching on TV. All right. Now, I was listening on radio. And uh, I think on radio you probably don't pick up things like that. Yeah. Well... Um, and also, I felt that his responses were uh, uh, um, more sincere. Lieberman's? Um, uh, Lieberman's, yeah. Um, well, for instance, his response um, with regard to racial profiling. Um, um, Cheney's response to me seemed like, well, um, um, how could I know how? I mean, uh, how could I know how a, a black person would feel? Because, I mean, he, he just kind of didn't give the, the type of re types of responses that, that Lieberman gave. I don't know. Okay. Um, I didn't have that impression, but uh, if that's what you saw, that's what we want to hear. We want to hear how you felt about it. Uh, did you think there was a winner in the bait tonight? Uh, I think Lieberman won. Okay. I, I gathered you would say that. Uh, I suspect that the polls will show that there wasn't any winner. Really? That, uh, yeah, that both sides uh, were very very effective nobody gained and nobody lost i don't think there was any uh you know any uh, advantage to either party tonight and i would say that uh, really what gained was the the political system of the country the united states of america gained because these two fellows were very impressive tonight yeah yeah well i i think both of these candidates were were it made me feel more comfortable than the, the the presidential candidates yeah uh, what did you think of the idea that I suggested earlier, uh, this person who called me came up with, that uh, the voters be allowed to decide which of the two candidates they want to vote for for president and which for vice president? For example, you'd still, have, I, a, you'd still have a Gore-Lieberman ticket, excuse me, you'd still have a Gore-Lieberman ticket and a Bush-Cheney ticket, but the voter would be able to designate which one of the two he wanted to be president and which vice president. That's a great idea. Um, I don't see how that would, how how that could ever happen, but <laughs> well, there's no constitutional reason why it couldn't happen. No reason no, at all. No. Uh, you could uh, easily simply say the the party designates George Bush and Richard Cheney as our ticket, and the voters will choose which one of the two is going to be president, which one is going to be vice president. So there there wouldn't be any any kind of constitutional changes at all. No constitutional like changes necessary, so far as I can see. The Constitution so simply says less, that... A, a, a party type of decision, then? Or, well, we lost up to the voters. Or, or, uh, okay. Yeah. So then, 
then we might as well just have write-in. Well, no, not write-in candidates. Uh, yeah, write-ins never win. Yeah. There are just two, not enough people are going to write it in. But uh, in this case, when you voted, you would simply put a little indicator, you know, in the voting, uh, you know how the vote, how you punch out the ballot with a little the punch? Uh, and all you would have to do would be to punch uh, the name, and then beneath it would be a, a space for punching for president or for vice president. Then how would that work with the electoral college? It wouldn't make any difference at all. It's exactly yeah. the same as it is now. The candidate of the party that got the most, the, can, the candidate of the party that got the most popular votes, uh, and the candidate of that party who got the most votes for president would get the electoral vote. Okay. Well, I, I think it'd be a good idea. I guess. Uh, you know, in fact, you can even go further than that. You would say that the candidates, the candidates who got the mo the party rather, which got the most votes for. Um, in the electoral college would be the party that got all the electoral votes and the, des des the decision as to who would be president or who would be vice president was left to the uh, total number of popular votes for each of those candidates oh okay well then it will work perfectly then it might I, it's a fascinating idea I, it's so simple I never thought of it hmm. I don't think anybody's ever thought of it <laughs> well this uh, person that I talked to tonight thought of it you know, the uh, the question was, uh, you know, why can't we have Cheney for president and Lieberman for president and Bush and uh, um, Gore for vice president? And, you know, there is no reason why you couldn't if it were set up that way. I don't think there's any constitutional or legal reason why you couldn't. Hmm. Unless somebody will show me one. Well, maybe somebody will call in with one. Okay. Hey, thank you. Very good. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Steve. We'll talk to you later. It's 12 minutes past the hour. I'm Ira Fistel. Number one in the world. Vice President of Sales, Tony or not, tells caller Tina Sanchez Galpin Ford inventory is one of the reasons Galpin outsells every other Ford dealer in the world. Coast to coast. Welcome to the Ira Fistel Show. To get in on the conversation, call us toll free at 888-822-8255. That's 888-822-TALK. Now, here's Ira Fistel. It's 15 minutes past the hour. Good morning, wherever you are in the United States. I'm Ira Fistel. Our next caller is Ralph. Hi, Ralph. What can we do for you? <clears throat> uh, good evening, Ira. Uh, I haven't, uh, I've been a bad boy. I haven't been listening to you lately. But I, I wanted to... Very uh, bad. Very I bad. Know, sorry. <laughs> uh, I want apologize to take, profusely. Um, go ahead. I'm sorry? I said apologize profusely, then go ahead. It's that time of year. I, I ask for forgiveness. <laughs> 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 but uh, I'm just curious about your take on, on what's happening uh, in Israel right now. Well, of course, they've had uh, violence the last several days. I guess it stopped today. I didn't hear that there was any more today. Did you? Um, I, I spoke to my brother uh, who lives in Jerusalem who said that the Hezbollah has called today there, which is Friday already, um, the Day of Anger. Well, what does that mean? Uh, have there been any that. disturbances? It was it was early in the morning. There it was seven o'clock in the morning, so they hadn't really. Yeah, I haven't heard that there was any new disturbance. Uh, of course, it's now by now it's got to be afternoon there. Um, it's I think it's nine hours later now. All right, so it's at least uh, no, at least it's uh, morning. Mid morning, right? Yeah, mid morning, if not early afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I I must say that that it, at least. Uh, it's the most pessimistic I've been in in, in a long time with, with what's going on over there, and uh, it, it's it, the Israelis ha have given in in so many ways that with what's happening now, I, I'm almost at the point where I think they should say, you know, this is our last best offer, yeah, and, and if this isn't going to be good enough, then then we're really sorry. We've given all we can give. And you're not serious about making peace, and we'll set up our borders the way we want them, and and that's it. Period. Yeah, but this is, that doesn't solve anything. That doesn't solve anything. That leaves you right back where you started uh, day one, uh, 50 years ago. Constant and uh, unfor un uh, constant violence with no no end foreseen. But how's that any different than what's going on now? Because at least now you've got a chance to get a peace settlement. They have come a long way. A lot of issues have been settled. A lot of agreements have been made. 
and I, I think to uh, throw the, the gains away uh, would be not profitable for either side. But who who have the gains been for? Has Israel the gains are for gained? both sides. The gains how are for both Israel sides. Gained? Each side gains. How peace the, how is, peace is a benefit to everybody. How? <laughs> what do you mean how? Well, I mean just to say can, that, that they if have only them. if for no other reason than economically, uh, peace would be a bonanza for both both the Israelis and the Palestinians. But I, I well, I think more so for the Palestinians. I think Israel economically has. You know, has has had great economic gains gains without. Yeah, well, you know, it has with a, with one of the reasons for wait a minute, whoa, yeah. whoa, slow down, Ralph. One of the reasons for those gains has been the prospect of peace. That's one of the reasons why investment has run to Israel, because people see it as a uh, as a nation that has a chance to be uh, at peace and to concentrate on its uh, economic development. Well, and without that, is, you're not going to have that that much uh, growing stones. Capital. Well, a hundred thousand Palestinians are going every day into Israel to work. Yeah. So, that's well, what, so that's we, the reason why there has to be peace. There's but, no but, sense in not having peace. But they can't have it both ways, the Palestinians. Well, the, the vast right majority. Well, well, wait a second. Wait a second. The vast majority of Palestinian people are perfectly happy to have jobs and uh, have normal lives. Right. They aren't the so ones why that are, they already put down the the. The you know the the radical few who are spoiling it for well, all of for all the rest of them because that's a very difficult thing to do for reasons of pride ethnicity and uh, perceived past uh, past humiliations and and you've just given the exact reasons why I think there will there will never be peace as well, much as I hope for it and as much as I was optimistic for it I think for those exact reasons that you just gave. I just don't think it'll ever happen. Well, I hope you're wrong, and I think you probably are wrong. Uh, I think that there will be peace. Indefinitely. Uh, it may not be easy to come by. It may take longer. But every time they get a little closer, you know, even when the talks break off, every time it gets a little closer. And uh, one of these days, the hotheads on both sides who, uh, who don't really want peace will eventually be overcome. I mean, do you think that uh, there are a lot of Palestinians who don't want peace? Yeah, there are. There are a lot of Palestinian uh, radicals who don't want peace because with peace, they lose their influence. They lose their importance. At the same time, on the Israeli side, there are people who don't want peace. They don't want to make any, uh, any other sacrifices. They don't want the peace settlement. But uh, they, too, are in the minority in Israel. And I, I expect that uh, eventually, maybe another 5, 10, 15, 20 years, but I do not see why there cannot be peace there. Uh, and there's no problem that cannot be worked out if, if both sides really want to do it. Are you still there? That is, uh, I used to be as optimistic as you, but, but I, I become much, unfortunately, much, much, yeah. much less optimistic. Okay, I, I still have optimism. It's guarded optimism. I'm not a Pollyanna, but I do think it's possible, and I think eventually it'll happen. Okay, thank you very much, Ralph. 21 minutes past the hour, so I'm, I'm Arthur Costello of Morning Book. Live, coast to coast, welcome to the Ira Fistel Show. To get in on the conversation, call us toll free at 888-822-8255. That's 888-822-TALK. Now, here's Ira Fistel. 27 minutes before the hour, and I'm Ira Fistel. Hilda is next. Hi, Hilda. Oh, hi, Ira. I have to apologize to you, and I don't know if you're ever going to talk to me again. Oh, I probably will. <laughs> well, I was working so hard last night, I absolutely forgot to turn the radio on. Well... I didn't turn the radio on until 1 o'clock at night. All right, I'm afraid that'll cost you a dozen lashes with a wet noodle. <laughs> I hope it'll be a noodle that's been in chicken soup. <laughs> that's uh, that's what Ann Landers always says, you know, and she does something, something, uh, writes yes. something that her, her public points out is not right or something. She sentences herself to a hundred lashes with a wet noodle or something. Oh, she had a wonderful thing in her in her column the other day about uh, you can tell you're getting old when you bend down to pick something up and you think, what else can I do while I'm down here? <laughs> you know, she's. I think she's over eighty. Well, so am I. <laughs> That's why I was able to appreciate it. Yeah. 
But Ann Landers, I mean, has been writing that column since I was a kid. Yeah. I don't remember a time when there wasn't an Ann Landers column in the Chicago Sun Times. She's and, good too. Oh, and she's still and uh, Abigail Van Buren is still writing her column. Of course, that's her twin sister. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Um, I wanted to ask you a political speculation. Let's Not do it. about this. This is a cute idea that you all have been yakking about, but. Um, it's not going to happen, so what are we well, probably won't, but it's uh, but somebody brought it up, and I thought I'd put it to the audience to see what the yeah, audience thinks uh, of it. It's, it's fun. It's kind of cute. Um, I, I was listening. I only heard part of the um, debate tonight. I had uh, my computer guru came in the middle of it, and I had to go to work. But um, I need a computer guru, you understand, because even though I use a computer, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but the other morning, I was wakened by, um, Iris in the, I, what's his name, Iris in the morning? Yeah. Uh, he had, uh, Senator Kerry on. Senator and John Kerry? Was outlining or stating the Gore proposals, Gore platform, so lucidly, so beautifully. And when I heard, um, um, yeah, what's his name, the vice presidential oh, candidate, Lieberman. Uh, Lieberman. Lieberman, I, I, uh, I was struck again by how clear it can all be made mm -hmm. and how simple. And um, I just, I just wonder how much pressure is is making the presidential candidates a little less articulate than they might be. Well, that could be. There is a great deal of pressure, but I think actually George Bush, for example, was a good deal more articulate than people expected him to be. Yes, he was. He was. But he still still looked like a nerd. <laughs> 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 Nothing about him but looks like a president. Well, I mean, a lot of people would say that about Al Gore, too. No, I I kind of like the way Al Gore looks. I think he could improve the kind of clothes he wears. I think it makes him look stiffer than he has to look. But um, that's so unimportant. What I wonder is, what I don't understand is, why do people, when they get into an argument with you about him, accuse him of being a liar? What is he lying about? Who, Gore? Yeah. Well, if you're one who thinks he's a liar, you would say the Buddhist Temple incident, um, and probably a few other things related to Bill Clinton when uh, uh, Gore said there was no uh, grounds for the Clinton case. Um, I don't know. That, I don't think that was a lie. But uh, if you believe that uh, it was, you know that there wasn't a truthful statement. Then you know. It seems to me there are a lot of things that he says metaphorically that he's accused of exaggerating or, or fibbing or whatever. I mean, that that thing, for instance, when he talked about his uh, his mother-in-law. And the dog in the bed. And the dog. Yeah. Well, that's such... We always talk like that. By it, the way... It was just a metaphor for what is really true, that uh, people's medication is more expensive than medication for dogs. But you have... By the way, I have to break in with this, Hilda, because this is just so good. Uh, the Sacramento Bee newspaper, uh, I don't know what day of the week it was, has a whole series of editorial cartoons from that week. Must mm -hmm. have been Friday's or Saturday's paper. And one of the cartoons, there's a bunch of dogs sitting around playing cards. <laughs> one of them says, all right, that's that's enough. That's an, that's that's all. I'm going to vote for uh, Bush <laughs> because the, uh, you know, the reference to the dog by Clinton and not by Camille, by Gore. The dog is mad at, uh, be, you know, at, at uh, being used in uh, Gore's politics, the political campaign. But, but it's, it's so silly to make it a, a, a an issue that this well, is a proof that he wouldn't be a good president. It's not silly. It's a matter of trying to find something that will catch on with the voters. Trying to get, trying to um, convince the voters not to vote for Mr. Gore. And because, the, his, because he said his mother-in-law's medication was more expensive well, than his dog. Because... And it's the greatest, greatest farce to think that we would elect a president on something like that. Well, but, see, the, 
in a close race, every little thing counts. But but but, but the point think of it I'm trying way. to make is this is to me evidence that this is a man of a, a poetic nature almost to right. be able to talk in this kind of metaphor. But you see, you're seeing it differently. That's because you tend to support Mr. Gore anyway. But think, well, think of it this way. <laughs> think of it this way. If that anyway, listen before well, let me, we let me finish. Let me finish the thought. If that charge sway, let's say, a hundred voters. Yeah. And in a state like, let's say, Ohio, which is so close, and that 100 voters meant that the state won 21 electoral votes for Bush rather than Gore, wasn't it worth it? Of course it was worth it. Of course. Yeah. So every well, little thing counts. Well, but it's and, the wrong little things. That's what I'm really crying about. Well, right or wrong has nothing to do with it. The question is, how do you win the election? Yeah. I my spies tell me that somebody said hi to me last night, and I want to know who said hi to me. Uh, who was it who said hi to Hilda last night? I know somebody did, but I don't remember who it was. No. Somebody well, said to hi to Hilda, I, and I said you hadn't I been on for a few years. you are. I, you know, somebody was talking about uh, that they hadn't. Uh, I think I said I hadn't heard you in a few days, and uh, he said hi. Oh. So you've got at least one admirer out there. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Yeah. I like that very much. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm glad that you will talk to me again. I, I appreciate that. Of course I'll much. talk to you again. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. I didn't get to wish you a happy new year, so well, I'll say Same to you. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Good night. It's uh, 19 minutes before the hour. 888-822-8255 is the telephone number. Wherever you are in the country, you can call, and you can do it toll-free. It doesn't cost you anything to call. So uh, maybe we'll hear from, say, Tennessee tonight. Uh, I'd like to hear from uh, Kansas tonight. We have stations all over the country. How about Las Vegas? Haven't heard from Las Vegas in a while. Uh, let's hear from so all you people out there. Because all you have to do is dial the telephone number, and it's toll-free. You just get right on the air, and you don't pay a cent. 888-822-8255 is the toll-free telephone number. And I'm Ira Fistel. Breathe deeply. Coast to coast, welcome to the Ira Fistel Show. To get in on the conversation, call us toll free at 888-822-8255. That's 888-822-TALK. Now, here's Ira Fistel. It is 14 minutes past the hour, and I'm Ira Fistel. Joel is on the line. You there, Joel? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, we're talking about the Koufax Perfect Game, September 9th, 1965 at Dodger Stadium. Who was the Cub pitcher who pitched a one-hit game against Koufax and lost in that game? If I'm not mistaken, I think that was Ken Holtzman. Nope. He was oh. a left-hander, but it wasn't Ken Holtzman. Oh, darn it. Um, can you give me a hint? Well, yeah, he was a journeyman pitcher. This was the best game he ever pitched in his life. And, of course, he lost it. Um, yeah, he was... That, that was the amazing thing. There was one. He pitched a one-hitter and lost the game. Yeah. Not only that, but the one hit didn't figure in the scoring. Oh, the only... <laughs> That was Bob Hendley. Oh, okay. There Bob we... Hendley. And the only man to reach base in the game, the man who got the one hit, also walked another time up. And the time he walked, he scored the winning run without a, without a, without a base hit. Who was the only man to reach base in that game? Oh, jeez. I, I don't know. Dodger outfielder. And an Dodger, -Cub. oh, okay. I'm going to say then... Uh... Ex-Cub. Oh, I was going to say Lou Johnson. But You're that's... absolutely right. It was Sweet yeah. oh, Lou. Oh, Sweet Lou? Sweet Lou was the only guy who got on base in that game. He had a bloop double that didn't figure in the scoring. And then the one time he did get on, the other time he got on, he walked. He got sacrificed the second. He stole third. And when the Cubs catcher, Chris Krug, tried to throw him out at third base, he threw the ball into left field. Oh, and okay. Johnson scored. The only run of the game. I remember Sweet Lou? Remember the... the... World Series against the Minnesota Twins. He hit that home run that hit the uh, that hit the screen in left field. He was one of those kind of journeyman, almost journeyman kind of guys that got to the major leagues kind of late. Yeah, he didn't come up to the major leagues till he was almost thirty. I think he was twenty nine or twenty eight when he got to the major leagues. Yeah. Well, how old was Sandy when he retired? Kofax. Kofax. He was only thirty one, I believe. Yeah. Thirty one. Gosh. Because of course he had the bad finger and he was and the arthritic arm and he was worried about his future health. So. Yeah, it was it was the arthritis really that, that yeah. drove him out, right? Yeah. Well, the finger cost him uh, 1964. He missed part of the year with the bad with the bad circulation in the finger. I think it was 64. 64 was the year, that, or, or it was six, was 63 the year they swept the Yanks? 
Yeah, 63 was the year they swept the Yankees in the World Series. And Koufax had Koufax two wins. pitched the first and fourth games, right? right? He had two wins that year. Right. In a series. And then Claude Osteen and Don Drysdale won the other games of the league. Right. Right. And then that, the Dodgers went into their World Series. Oh, no, I do. It wasn't, it wasn't Osteen. It was Johnny Padres. Johnny Padres won the second game. Because I remember it was almost a virtual replay of the, of the uh, 1955 World Series when Padres beat the Yankees again. And then he beat, and uh, seven years later, what was it, seven or eight years later, he comes back and beats the Yankees again in Yankee Stadium, almost exactly the same kind of game. But then the very next year after that is when the Dodgers, or, I'm sorry, it was, no, because the, the next time the, for the Dodgers were in the series, they beat the Twins, and then the that, time after that, right. they got swept by the Orioles. That's right, that was 66. Oh, that was painful. <laughs> well, they, did, they didn't score a run after the first game. It was shut out three times in a row. Remember the Willie Davis three-error inning? Three errors and one inning. And that was, oh, uh, and that was and behind it, Koufax. Sandy was pitching. It's still a record. Uh, I that, think it that ties was, that a record. Was, yeah, I think it ties a record. I don't think it's is that a record. But. Yeah, there were back-to-back -back home runs. I gave Frank Robinson and Brooks Robinson. Uh, in that game? Yeah, it wasn't it the first game? I think, oh, yeah, it's the first game, not, not the last game, no. But the first game, yeah. Was it, remember, was it remember the Oreo. Remember the Oreo pitcher who came out of the bullpen was the the hero who stopped the Dodgers. Was Mo that Drabowski. Oh, Mo Drabowski. You remember Mo Drabowski? I remember. Yeah, I remember him. He was he was like a, a guy that was with the. He was a journeyman too. Wasn't he? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, he pitched a long time in the major leagues, but he came up with the Cubs. <laughs> Another one of those uh, many many uh, ex Cubs. And he came out of the bullpen, and I think in the first game, and shut the Dodgers out the rest of the way, and they never scored another run. I'll, I'll give your callers a chance here, but I wanted okay. to say real quick, about a, a, a few years back, actually about five or six years ago, I, I visited my girlfriend, um, her parents in Chicago, and I said, we've got to go to Wrigley Field. We just have to go there. So I was there for like about, I was there for a couple of weeks. We went to Wrigley Field, sat with the bleacher bums. I mean, it was just, you know, the, the place was packed. Then we went to Comiskey Park, and there was nobody there. Well, that's or, always the way. And and this year, the White, Sox, the White Sox uh, won everything, had the best record in the league. Uh, they didn't draw that well. I just couldn't believe it. And I thought, you know, it, it's, this is, it, the people on the South Side, of course, were a little bit more enthusiastic. Well, the South you Side people, you see, the difference is, uh, we'll talk about this another night, will you? Yeah. If I can go on for this for a long time, let's let someone else have a chance. Thank you, Joe. Call Thanks me again. Bye-bye. Right, right, it's 19 minutes past the hour at 888-822-TALK. I didn't mean to be short with Joe, but let's let somebody else have a crack at it. And the somebody else is me, Amor. Gloria Tosca. Si. Si, si buonasera, Cara. But, but tonight I'm uh, the Asian Jewish Tosca. So, <laughs> so the first thing I say to you is Shana Tova. The Thank you. Happy, I, happy New Year to you. That's right. And, and the second thing I say is Shabbat Shalom because yeah. it's Friday over Saturday. That is. Okay. Now, your caller before is correct. Uh, the word Oriental, we don't use that anymore. We use the word Asian. Now, the Asian people are, are very proud, proud, proud people to be um, in America. So if you ask an Asian what country he comes from, since I say thank you in 38 languages, the last five were learned in Asian languages, I would ask them, and they would not tell me. I would have to stand there and say, She She Ni, Kup Kun Kan, Gamun, Kam Samida, and Arigato. When I picked finally hit their, la their, their language, then they finally say, okay, that's the right one. But they wouldn't, they wouldn't tell me whether they came from China or they came from Korea. But they're very, very proud to be in America, and they're very beautiful people, and they do help me doing my hitches, you know, uh, on the road. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, Floria, hang on a second, Tara Mia, yeah, and we'll please. come back to you. Okay. Okay, it is 21 minutes past the hour, 888-822-TALK. Doesn't anybody want to take the P.I. Themes quiz? We've got five more of these. We've already done five, but we got another uh, set of them. So if you want to see if you can identify the show from the theme, now's a good time to call. 888-822-TALK. K-R-L-A, Talk 1110. Coast to Coast, welcome to the Ira Fistel Show. To get in on the conversation, call us toll-free at 888-822-8255. That's 888-822-TALK. Now, here's Ira Fistel. It's 24 minutes past the hour at 888-822-TALK. 
And we have uh, La Bella Tosca, the beautiful Floria Tosca on the Mille phone line. Now, now I have a Cup Kun Khan uh, story for you that's thank you in Thai. Uh, I was listening between 2 and 6 in the morning at KPF, uh, over KPFK, and Michael Levine, the author of uh, Triangle of Death, he wrote that with Laura Cavanaugh and Deep Cover also, he uh, said to the public, he said, what does Cup Kun Khan mean? Call into the station and tell me what Cup Kun Khan. I said, oh, my God, I, I know that. So I called in, left my name and number, and the next morning his, I think, Roy Tuckman or Tucker, who is his producer, called me and said, you won the book. So uh, Michael Levine sends me this beautiful picture of Michael and Laura, the two authors of uh, Triangle of Death, and it says to Tosca, and it says, Cup Kun Khan, Whatever you were doing in Thailand, I'm sure it was legal. Best wishes, Michael. <laughs> now that's what uh, that's. Thank you in Thailand. Yes, that is Thai. Well, now yes. see, my son is in Thailand right now. Really? Yes, he's been living there for about three years. Oh. So uh, I would next time I uh, communicate with him, I'll have to say, what was it? Cub. Well, well, he wrote it. Let me do it from from his photograph. It looks like K U P. Yeah. K U. -P. P. Peter, Kun, Cub Kun, Khan. Cub Kun Khan. Yeah, Cub Kun Khan. All right, I'll just think of the Cubs. Yes, that that's that, that <laughs> yes 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 yes. Cub Kun Khan. Uh, now um, let me ask you a question about um, Milosevic and uh, why did the Serbian people uh, decide not to use violence to get rid of Milosevic, like, just like Ceausescu was removed by his people, just like. Mussolini was removed by his people. Why did the Serbian people decide not to take uh, their, you know, his life? Well, I don't know. I suppose because they felt that just getting rid of him was enough. Mm -hmm. well, well, I don't think they will be getting rid of him. I think he's, he's still trying to get back. Well, he's a very da dangerous guy. No, I can't imagine how he could come back now if the army and the police uh, deserted him for the, for the public. Right. Well. Okay. Okay. And the next time I call into you, I'm going to ask you about Manhattan and New York City, but not tonight. All right. Okay. Shana Tova. Bye bye. It's bye. 27 minutes past the hour at 888-822-TALK. Let's talk to Bud next. Hello, Bud. Hello, Ira. What's on your mind? Well, uh, I think I have half of the answer on your uh, football question. Uh, okay. Football what was the answer? Uh, the question was, what was the score? They beat Cumberland 222 to nothing. That is absolutely right. And who was the coach for Georgia Tech? Uh, I'm going to guess that it was either Pop Warner or Alonzo Stagg. Nope, wasn't either one of them. All right. There was a man whose name is commemorated today by a very, uh, well, let's say a, a, a very famous uh, prize. Famous prize. A famous prize. It's the awarded Heisman? every... What? The Heisman? Yes. John Heisman was the coach of Georgia Tech who, uh, was, who uh, won that 222 to nothing game. I didn't uh, know. Let me give you a little quiz. Well, wait a minute. Let me, let me explain the story about that first. All right. uh, Heisman was very angry at other coaches who were trying to run up the score to, you know, to make their teams look better. And he, decided, he had this game scheduled with his little Cumberland College. And he decided that he'd show the other coaches what, it was, what running the score was really like. He said, all right, they want to run up the score. We'll show them what running up the score is. So... The longest gain Cumberland made all day was minus five yards. They played running clock in the fourth quarter so that uh, the game ended earlier. And also, uh, there's a famous story. Late in the game, Georgia Tech, I guess, kicked the ball away or something, and uh, somebody from uh, Cumberland picked it up and dropped it. And his teammate standing next to him, uh, was standing next to him, the guy drops it and says, Hey, pick it up and run with it. You know, we got the ball. And the guy who's uh, standing says, uh, oh, no, I'm not picking it up. You pick it up. You dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> because then they were getting hit all day, of course. Anyway, go ahead, bud. A little, quiz, a little short quiz for you. Yeah. Easy one first. What, were the, what was Notre Dame called before the Irish? The Catholics or the Nomads? How about the Ramblers? They were called that, too. Yeah. Uh, they were uh, called the, the, the Ramblers, though. It's the Loyola of Chicago became the Ramblers. I'll give you a harder one. Yeah. What were the Trojans of SC called before they were the Trojans? Now, that is a very good question because they've been the Trojans so long, I don't know what they were called before they were the Trojans. They were called the Methodists. <laughs> they were? <laughs> the Methodists. Oh, well, SC. Seemed... famous coach there, uh, the track coach, used to say, when they asked you why they won, he would say, and the Lord was with the Methodists. 
Oh, my goodness. Oh. Yeah, all right, hang on a second. We'll come back to you, bud. Okay? Right. Don't go away. It's 30 minutes past the hour. This is the Friday Night Fun Show. 888-822-TALK is the t- telephone number. I'm still looking for a volunteer to take the rest of these uh, themes of, P- of PI shows. And I'm Ira Fistel. KRLA Talk 1110. Live newsroom update. Veteran actor Richard Farnsworth is dead. Farnsworth died yesterday from a self-inflicted gunshot wound at his home in New Mexico. He was 80 years old. Back to Ira Fistel on KRLA Talk 1110. This is the Ira Fistel Show. Call us now at 888-822-8255. That's 888-822-TALK. Now, here's Ira Fistel. And it is 27 minutes before the hour. Uh, Still looking for volunteers. Does anybody think they know any of these uh, themes? I thought people would jump at uh, at doing those. We also have the cop theme, cop show themes. Anyway, um, we have Bud on the line, and Bud, you still wanted to ask me another question? Yeah, um, I was just going to say that, uh, I was going to ask you, who did Bob Gibson play for before he played for the Cardinals? The Harlem Globetrotters. Yeah, you got it. (laughs) I was there that night that he was called up in the the Coliseum. He wasn't even on the program. Uh Uh-huh. We had some corporate seats, so I was sitting down close, and who is this guy? You found out. He didn't, he didn't start. He was just warming up. Everybody's wondering, who the heck is this guy? Uh, I was at the first game in the Coliseum. Oh, still, yeah? Still have my tickets and a scorecard. I kept score. Yeah, you still have it? The Giants lost because the guy missed third base. You still have the scorecard? Still have the scorecard. Well, that's got to be a little bit uh, valuable. It'd be a nice yeah, thing I've to Yeah, I've got hear. it stored away in my file cabinet. Yep. Uh... Great, great times. Uh, my first major league game. I got one for you about Gibson. Gibson was probably the toughest competitor I ever saw. I believe he even taught his own players. Yeah, and the one thing about Gibson that I cannot get over, and I just I can't imagine how anybody could physically have done this. Remember, he was pitching against the Pirates, and Roberto Clemente hit a line drive off his leg, and uh, Gibson picked up the ball and you know fielded the ball. Uh, goes back on the mound. And he's obviously hurt. He's lying on the ground. He finally gets up. Uh, he goes back on the mound. He threw a pitch, and it was high. And they both, the, uh, almost over the batter's head, he turned the ball, and he threw a second pitch, and that was high, and he collapsed. They took him off the field, and they found he had a broken leg. Oh, my. Now, you tell me how any human being can get out there on a mound and throw two pitches to a major league hitter with a broken leg. How about a Rams defensive end who played... Uh... In a, in a Super Bowl, I believe, with a broken leg. With a broken leg? Who? Yeah, with a defensive end. Uh, the guy went to the Hall of Fame, uh, played a Super Bowl with a broken leg. Deacon? Big guy, big guy from Florida. What's Je- his name? From Florida. I don't know who that was. But uh, he played the game. Afterwards, the X-Ray had a broken leg. He played the whole game. Well, I don't know how anybody could do that. Uh, it's amazing. Was it's it Jack amazing. Youngblood? He did. It was am- it's amazing. Wasn't he a linebacker? No, he was defensive end. He was an all-pro defensive end. Yeah, was Young Youngblood? Excuse me? Mel Garcia is saying Jack Youngblood, but I thought he was a linebacker. It was Jack Youngblood. Youngblood. It was Youngblood, okay. And he was defensive end. Uh-huh. Played that game with a broken leg. Yeah. Uh, just kept going. Oh, I don't know. Well. Well. Can you imagine the, the incredible pain that must have been? How can anybody do that? I don't know. Uh, I've talked to pro football players, and they say that every game is incredible pain. But imagine breaking your leg in pain. Yeah. Well, like I say, I don't know how I don't know how Gibson ever could have pitched uh, to major league hitters with a broken leg. That, that that's incredible. One last thing. Uh, yeah. Did you ever hear about the, the remark that Drysdale made? He was away from the team for some reason, and he heard that uh, Koufax had pitched a one hitter. Oh, I can tell you the story. The story was it was uh, late in the season, and Koufax was pitching. Drysdale had been sent ahead uh, to get rest because he was going to pitch the next day. And he hears the Koufax pitch the 100, and his question was, did he win? Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was the days when the Dodgers had no hitting at all. Yeah, they, uh, uh, and the one, I guess in closing, uh, remember Wally Moon hitting it over the, quote, Asian wall in left field? The Chinese wall, right, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, that was um, the moon shots, they used to call the moon it. Moonshots. Moonshots. Uh, but I guess we have to call it the Asian wall now. No, we don't. 
All right, I got one for you on Wally Moon. Wally Moon, uh, in his first time at bat in the major leagues, hit a home run. Okay, he was playing for the Cardinals. Yeah. Who was Wally Moon named for? Wally Moon. Wally Pip? Nope. His full name was Wallace Wade Moon, and he was Wallace named the after the football coach. coach, Wallace Wade, right. Well, and then he went down to be he went down to be the coach, I think, in Arkansas. Uh, baseball coach. Yeah, baseball coach. Yeah. Now, he was from Arkansas, I believe. Yeah. All right. Great. Right, thank you. Good talking Call to you. Call me again. Bye-bye. Bye now. Yeah, Wally, Wallace Wade Moon. Wallace Wade was the coach of the Duke team. If I'm not mistaken, the Duke team that came out to uh, the Rose Bowl, undefeated, untied, and unscored upon. And that was the game, and I think USC scored in the fourth quarter uh, on a pass from their third-string quarterback <laughs> to, um, I think it was Andrew Val Kruger, wasn't it, who caught that pass and scored? And it was the only point scored on Duke all that year, and Southern California beat them in the Rose Bowl. Somebody will remember that game, I'm sure, if somebody's listening. I think that was the 1939, or, uh, 1939 season or 1940 Rose Bowl or something like that. But anyway, that was Wallace Wade, and that was who Wally Moon was named for. It's 38 minutes past the hour, hour and um, that means it's 22 minutes before the hour, come to think of it. 888-822-TALK is the telephone number. We've got about 20 minutes. Come on, people. Uh, I've got all these wonderful quizzes, but I need somebody to take them for me. Um, they don't belong quiz. Okay, I'm going to give you some of these don't belongs. Uh, the following, which do not belong. Um, Turandot, Swan Angelica, the Barber of Seville, and Manon Lesco. Which one does not belong? Which one does not belong? Tom, Mickey, Jerry, or Fival? Which one does not belong? Uh, Cathay Pacific, El Al, Varig, and Singapore. <laughs> These are, which one does not belong in, the, in that group? Which one does not belong? Harvard, Yale, Rutgers, Columbia. Which one does not belong? Uh, <laughs> alfalfa, Satch, Sparky, and Buckwheat. Which one does not belong? Okay. Uh, let's take a time out here and uh, see if these people want to call up and, and participate in this. This is The Fun Show, and I'm Ira Fistel. KRLA Talk 1110. Here's Ira Fistel. Well, I don't know where everybody went this morning. It's 15 minutes before the hour, and we still have time to do all these wonderful quizzes, but nobody wants to uh, call in and, and identify all those themes. Mel, you want to run them anyway and see if people can identify them? Let's, let's see what happens. Um, Mel Garcia is going to play the theme, and we have five of them, and you're supposed to tell what show they're from. So if nobody wants to volunteer for it, we'll play the themes and see if that'll get you out of the woodwork. Whoa, a little loud there. This is number one. What private eye show can use this music as a theme? Okay, let's fade that one out. And uh, if you think you know it, call right now, 888-822-TALK. And now we're going to play another one and see if you know this. Which show used this music? Well, if you don't know it now, you're really dumb. <laughs> okay. 888-822-TALK is the telephone number. Let's try another one. Uh, let's see if maybe this one doesn't have the title on it. Try something else. Uh, let's try another one here. 
This is uh, cut number four, and see if you know what TV show this music is from. Well, no, no, it's you, you, yeah, just okay. Mel is about to play it here. What music are we getting here? one wasn't quite as popular. Might have been tougher. And one more. Uh, let's see if we can get this one. It's cut number 15, I believe. Folks, let's see what we got. Who's on the line here? Bob is on the line. Okay, Bob, you're up. Uh, hello, Ira. How you doing? Good. Oh, good. I, I'm not too good on any of those uh, TV things, but I just wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about Wally Moon. Okay. Uh, you know, did you remember back in uh, when he was playing for the Dodgers back in the 60s there, did you remember he had a baseball camp up here in uh, the Covina Hills? Well, I didn't know that because uh, I wasn't Wally, in Los Angeles uh, then. Wally Moon's baseball camp? Yeah. I was not in Los Angeles then, so oh, I didn't you know. Weren't all, I didn't know if you followed his career that uh, close. Well, I remember him when he was with the Cardinals, of course. Oh, okay, right. But, but when he came to L.A. here, he uh, started a, uh, a baseball camp mm -hmm. up here in the Covina Hills, and uh, I was in Little League at that time, and uh, I was one of the guys that were chosen to uh, to go to camp there. And he would uh, he would all uh, he would actually come out and, and instruct us on batting and fielding and everything. And it was just. Uh, it's really a wonderful man if you ever get a chance yeah. to talk to him personally. Though. Wally Moon is one of those guys who was never going to make the Hall of Fame. No, but it was right. a good, solid, everyday ball player. Played against all kinds of pitching, fielded right. you know very well, right. uh, adjusted his swing to whatever circumstances. You know, he was yeah. a pull, you know he could be a pull hitter or he could go to the opposite yeah. field. Yeah. Uh, just one of those outstanding, you know, everyday ball players that you need on your team to win. Right, and he you was know, he was wonderful too. And in, in um, I'm trying to think of the guy that. He, he came out. He, he played in left field, and I'm 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 trying to think of it was if it was Jimmy Pearsall that played for L.A. Did he ever play for L.A.? I don't think he ever played for the Dodgers. Oh, okay. Then I, I I've got his name, but he would he would get the other team members to come out and and give us uh, coaching too. But he was a uh, just a wonderful person though if, uh, yeah. if, to talk to about the game, and then he was just uh, really enthused, got us all fired up and everything. All right, I got one good question for you about Wally Moon. What was his hometown? Where was, he, where was he originally from? Gosh, I don't know, Ira. I, <laughs> I don't know. You know, all I remembered, I was just so thrilled. Yeah, he was in the metropolis. This guy, of... was this guy, this, guy this, this baseball player, yeah. was coming out, you know, taking us by the the, the, the arm and hand and showing yeah. us how to hold a bat, how to swing. And it was great. Just, uh, it was, well, he, it was i got to tell you, the town. It's amazing that you you got a chance to meet someone that great. And, and, uh, and a personality like that, it was just so enthused about the game yeah. and, he, and he really got us so uh, fired up about it. Okay, i got to tell you the town he came from because I've never forgotten this. Okay. He was from the metropolis of Bay, Arkansas. No kidding. Wow. <laughs> I have wow. no idea how many people there are in Bay, Arkansas, done. but it can't be very many. I'm just wondering what he's doing today, Ira. Uh, well, he's obviously going to be retired, but I don't know where he is. He, he was baseball coach at Arkansas, I believe, for years. Oh, was he? Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay, we got to hey, move along. We're out of time. Ira. Thank okay, you. Thank you. It's 9 before the hour. I'm Ira Sistel. KRLA, Talk 1110, traffic update. In Norwalk on the... Planets 15 times larger than Jupiter. Some scholars prefer that they be considered small stars. Oh, Rolex offers annual prizes to imaginative inventors. A Nigerian has developed a refrigerator for remote areas which requires no electricity. A clay pot... Two clay pots, in fact, separated by wet sand, keeps perishable food for weeks. For what it's worth, feng shui. That's the Chinese art of orderly arrangement. Good feng shui promotes a positive flow of chi, C-H-I. A feng shui expert, Deborah G, feng shuied a whole ballpark. While the San Francisco Giants' new ballpark was being completed, Deborah G 
recommended installation of eight flagpoles in center field. She promised when the eight flagpoles got their chi flowing, the champagne would not be far behind. Well, the Giants, 97 and 65, did have the best record in baseball this year. Paul Harvey, good day. He knows some of our uh, our um, themes there. Okay, Clay, what do you think you know here? Um, well, I think I know a few, but first things first, uh, I wanted to uh, kind of rib you about your White Sox. Well, you don't uh, rib me about them. I mean, Requiescent Pache, they had a good year. They had, it was a great run, but you know what it, it wins in the playoffs. And they, they didn't have it. It'll be interesting to see if they go out and get it. Well, I agree with you entirely. I mean, uh, I said, remember last week, I was saying, I don't know if they can win a game. Yeah. And they didn't win a game. And the yeah, because they... it's a different season. It's a, it's sure a it different game. Sure it is. And if you haven't got a number one starter, you know, if you def- if you rely on offense to win games, you're going to be in trouble right. in the postseason. In the playoffs, it's yeah. it's a uh, no-win situation. But I, I called because I uh, heard my, my favorite P.I. show, the theme for my favorite P.I. show, and that was Remington Steel. Okay, Remington Steel was what, the third one we played? Yeah, the oh. mellow one. Yeah, there we go. The, the change of the pace. Um, the first one, I think, was Vegas. You're right. You know who wrote that? Uh, it's interesting. No, I don't. Georgia Frontier's husband, Dominic. Ah, the swimmer. No, no, no. no, no. That well, was which one? one? Her, her later husband, Dominic Frontier. Okay, okay, yeah. the namesake. And he's uh, he wrote, he wrote that thing. Okay, getting. That's where your te- the tears are coming out of your freaking eyes, and you can't see the road in front of you. And if you listen to the preceding fifty minutes of radio, and that didn't happen to you. There's plenty of other really neat radio shows that you can listen to right about now. And they're so funny. You know? I mean, if you didn't have the tears squirting out of your eyes on that one, then bug off, go listen to some other, quote, funny show, end quote. You know, the radio shows that are on, especially in this town, but all over this country, that claim to be funny, and then you listen to it, and it's like two people talking, you know, and they just keep talking until something funny comes out. And that's what they call a funny show. Like, they're just funny guys, or they're funny people, and they got a funny life. And uh, and it's the same pedestrian, lame, mainstream stuff. I mean, I you know, I don't mean to sound... Uh, I don't want to be critical or anything, but that's what it is. But I get people coming up to me when we do personal appearances. They say, Phil, I had to, I had to stop the car. I had to stop the car. To me, that makes it all worthwhile, because that's the kind of laugh we want to give you. The kind where it hurts, where you could die if you're driving, where the car, you may lose control of it. I mean, that's what we're going for. And that last 50 minutes, I'm going to tell you right now, if if you didn't think that was funny... Then that's fine. You don't have to, but you, this ain't your. Sh- this ain't a show for you, man. Go listen to some other real edgy uh, show. Go listen to uh, Jamie and Danny. Something really edgy like that. Okay. Um, wanted to. By the way, the old people driving thing. I'm a baby boomer, and I'm going to be in my sixties in another twenty years. And guess what? Nobody's taking my license from me. As this generation gets older, this is going to be a moot question. Nobody's pulling our licenses. Oh, 12 years, not 20? Gee, thanks a lot for that, Mike. I forgot. That's a producer for you, huh? Always correcting your mistakes. Not 20, 12, pops. Check your facts. Anyway, nobody's taking my license away from me. And a lot of these old coots that are driving around... Look, my father-in-law and my mother-in-law are in their late 60s, early 70s. Those guys log thousands of miles every year. They're doing fine. They're cool. It ain't about them. You know the people that are really kind of need to be talked about? Forget about old people that drive. Forget that. Here's a problem that affects all ages. And these are the people, not some old lady driving a car. This is the guy that you want to grab and throw from a moving vehicle. The person who gets car sick. Have you had that in your life lately? Have you had a guy or a, or a gal? Have you had somebody in your life who gets car sick? Um, could you not, could, you know, oh, what's what's wrong? Well, I get a little car sick, and you're going down a windy, yeah, this is California, we have a lot of those kinds of, could we go on a straight road somewhere? Well, we're in uh, Laurel Canyon right now, I don't know how straight it's going to get anytime soon. And where I live, uh, we have, 
Canaan, and we have, you know, Malibu Canyon, and we got Las Virginis, and we got Topanga Canyon, and man, it ain't nothing but windy. And that's when you hear your friends, a lot of times they're from back east, a lot of times they're right here from California, uh, I'm getting a little car sick. Well, let me explain something about car sickness so that you can all, you know, be very clear on this. Car sickness is not a physical malady. It is not. Oh, I know what you're thinking. You're th oh, I, Phil, are you saying it's a psychological malady? No, I think that car sickness is even deeper a flaw than that. Car sickness is a character failing. Car sickness is an immoral sensibility. Car sickness is a sin. And if you get car sick and then you die at that moment, you will go to hell and burn. Because you can control it. You know you can control it. But you get car sick to bug your friends. And you get car sick to bug your in-laws and everybody else that's around your family. I get a little car sick. Oh, really? Well, here's what's going to happen. Throw up in my car. The door opens. You get kicked out. And we're going about 65 right now. Down a windy mountain road. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> You cats that get car sick, man, the word's out. You ain't sick. You ain't even sick up here. You're weak. And you should be taken to, uh, like an abbey. You should be taken to an abbey and you should go on retreat and confess your sins to God. You getting car sick? You know, you'll get tumble sick here in about five seconds. You think car sick's bad, man? Wait till you see what happens to your stomach when you're rolling down a highway at about 65 with no car around you. So that's the one that we wanted to address here this afternoon. And specifically, uh, Melissa's fiancé, Mark, what a wuss you are. By the way, Mark, I don't believe any of the things that I'm saying. Melissa put me up to all of this crap. But actually, I, did, I do kind of believe it's a character feeling. I know you're a pretty nice guy, but, you know, butch up, will you? Car sick. Car sick it ain't even on the list of sick, you know? I'm a little car sick. I'm going to kick you out the door. All right, anyway, it's the Phil Hendry Show, 1-800-449-8686. You're listening to Phil Hendry on KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. Phil Hendry Show here, 1-800-449-8686. I got a map here of, of Eastern Europe. Um, I, uh, you know, I don't know, man, but the Poland, the Czech Republic, Bratislava, is that a country? That's Slovakia. Uh... Hungary and, 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 and Bosnia and Serbia and Romania and Bulgaria and Ukraine and Belarus. All of these are areas of the world that most people really don't know much about. And when we talk about Europe, does anybody really think about those countries? I mean, I'm talking about not, not scholars. I mean, just regular guys, regular gals who have their, you know, summer vacation planned for France. Anybody thinking about Poland and the Czech Republic? That's a real... Man, that's a real creepy part of the world. The, the people over there who are... Seriously. Now, I don't know about Yugoslavia I, uh, specifically, but there are countries over there filled with some pretty nasty people. Forget about the government. I mean nasty people. Poland, for starters. Nasty, nasty people. Let's take, for instance, the German Blitzkrieg in World War II. The Germans went into Poland, and then the SS followed. The SS to round up all the Jews. You know who helped the SS round up the Jews? The Polish people did. They were turning in their friends and their neighbors. And to this day, you can go over to Poland. They ain't got a kind word to say about a Jewish person over there at all. So they're the biggest pack of collaborating turncoat scum. And whenever I see something on television about the poor Polish people in the Blitzkrieg, I laugh. I get myself a quart of malt liquor and a big quart of ice cream and sit down and enjoy it. I could care less. This whole region of the world is settled by people who the Romans were able to keep at bay. The Romans during the, uh, the Vandal invasions were, you know, they were a, a, a people under siege. There was an empire under siege. They had the Krauts from the north, the Germans, and if you, you saw Gladiator, you got a little bit of a taste of the German tribes back in the uh, early part of the day, you know, the early part of, uh, of humanity. The Germans were animals. Animals. They belched and farted and uh, you know, ate red raw meat. They knew nothing. Few of them knew anything about farming. Uh, most of the food that they ate was dairy and meat because they just would slaughter a horse and eat it because they you plant something. I don't know. What do you mean plant something? You plant it and the thing grows. Corn. I don't know. Okay. 
Well, that's the whole thing there. That's that whole part of the world. They're real creepy. Of course, the French ain't much better. I was just talking about how the Nazis were rounding up all the Jews. The French helped them do the same thing. Those French cops over there, those gendarmes, those coppers were like they were in the very they were in the forefront of rounding up the Jews and throwing them to concentration camps. I mean, they're all garbage. But if you get if you get past German, and we all know about Krauts, and we've all get, done the German jokes, but now get past that and get over to Czechoslovakia and Hungary. There's a reason why Bram Stoker put Dracula in the middle of freaking Romania over there and Bulgaria. I don't even want to know what that is. Though that whole part of the world is oddball, man, and nobody can figure it out. Nobody born over here can figure it out. They got a uh, hard on for each other like you wouldn't believe. And, uh, you know, this whole thing that happened in, in Yugoslavia over the last few years, Bosnia and Serbia, and there's people actually on TV trying to make sense out of this. Well, you see, uh, they are Christian and Muslim, and it goes back thousands of years. Just exactly when do people stop worrying about this stuff? Like the Armenians, they got a problem with the Turks. That's going to go on for another hundred years because there was some massacre. Well, okay. But that's the whole heart of the problem over there. Is they, everybody's got a, you know, they got uh, this. It's 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 religious. It's ethnic. It's something else. But that that whole Eastern Europe thing is something we'll never get because it's almost uh, prim primeval. It's it's like not even part of the civilized world. It's a lot of bats in caves and stuff, and uh, guys wearing fur coats and pushing ox carts up roads. What? A lot of women in babushkas and you know like running ahead of the blitzkrieg. Just and just when I want to work up a little bit of sympathy for these people, the people themselves. Forget about the government. The people themselves turn out to be real scum, really nasty. So anything's going on over there, man. You know, God, you better believe it. I heard Clinton say it today, and these nuts are saying, well, do you think that we'll get involved militarily? I hope not. They're in one side over there, and I'd back up. One minute, this guy's good, and next minute, you don't know, man. Get, stay away. You stay, what you do is, remember when they put the wall through Berlin? They ought to put a wall around that whole country. And stay out like it's a toxic waste dump for a hundred years. And then we'll go over, we'll peek over the wall in about a hundred years and see who's left. Just let them do... See, in the old days, the cops used to round up gang members and throw them into a paddy wagon. They'd round up a gang member, you know, a few gang members from one gang, a few from another gang. They'd throw them in the back of the wagon. They'd drive around the street. You know, they'd drive around a block about five times while these guys kicked the crap out of each other. And then they'd open up the thing and they'd just all spill out. That's what we do with that. We just can put a wall around it, contain it like it's a toxic waste dump, and let them go at each other for the next, oh, half a century or whatever it takes. And, yeah, I know there'll be refugees and there'll be a bad scene. You know, what are we going to do? Because I'm telling you right now, they're a very unpredictable, strange breed, man. These are the people that all of a sudden we're feeling really warmly about. Do you remember about a year ago we were dropping bombs on these guys? Now all of a sudden we're their friend? The only thing that was really cool about all of that, though, was looking at that, uh, storming into that TV station and setting fire to it. Boy, you know how many times I've wanted to do that. That was very awesome. That was very cool. That was, uh, you know, it was like watching that, that whole trip that went down in uh, Tiananmen Square, remember 10 to 11 years ago, whatever it was? I was in Tiananmen Square in 82. I stood there in the middle of that big square, and I saw those big communist pictures of Mao Zedong and all these people. And uh, then, I, then I, there it was with all the tanks in it. Not that I wanted to be there then, but uh, it was very historic to watch that. Now I'm seeing this stuff going down. Every now and again, we see these TV screens filled with guys standing on tanks with microphones. Some guy waving a flag from a busted window. And then the fun starts, you know. There's, uh, they ain't got no money, and the mafia takes over, and the trains ain't running on time, and then there's a crime, and, and uh, all of that really groovy uh, democracy we were promising everybody ain't exactly working out. Just let them do what they're doing. Seal it off, like I said, like a bad garbage can full of some bad spoiled food, and uh, sit on the lid. And wait for that whole thing to uh, to finish up, because it's a really oddball part of the world. None of us got a handle on this thing. And, you know, I was uh, I, I could have gone to Transylvania, and I didn't. I was invited. It was a radio station promotion. We were going to take some listeners to Dracula's Castle. And I didn't go, not because I believe in vampires, but I didn't want some guy with a submachine gun parked up my keister for about two weeks. These guys are walking around with machine guns while you're supposed to be enjoying yourself at Dracula's Castle. 
relaxing there at Drax Castle, and these Romanians are standing there with the big star on their hat with a machine gun shoved in your back. Have good time. I already I, I went through that in China. So, uh, you know, but it's making for, like the Gulf War, some damn fine TV. All right, now, Casino Night 2000 is right around the corner. November the 4th, Casino Night 2000. Phil Henry's show and my friend's place present Dwight Yoakam at the Santa Monica Museum of Flying November 4th. Starts at 7 p.m. Uh, all the proceeds go to my friend's place, a resource center for uh, homeless runaway kids. Full program, lots of fun. Uh, tickets 250 per person. Call 323-908-0011, extension 102. You ever wanted to play the piano but are afraid to buy one in case someone loses interest or you're not sure what to get here's the perfect solution rent a great piano from keyboard concepts all residential rentals include a free 100 percent purchase option towards any new or used piano in stock popular pianos such as yamaha baldwin steinway even the magnificent Berzendorfer. keyboard concepts is yamaha disc clavier headquarters too select from rental pianos by yamaha young chang Kawai, and others yamaha clavinovas and roland digitals are usually available. Your good credit is required. Call for commercial rentals and teacher referrals also. Courteous professional treatment and great prices seven days a week. Three convenient locations in the Valley at Van Nuys Boulevard and Burbank Boulevard. On the west side, it's David L. Abel. Find pianos on Beverly Boulevard east of La Cienega and in Thousand Oaks on Thousand Oaks Boulevard near Moore Park. For information or directions, call 800-818-PIANO. That's 800-818-PIANO. Some clouds and fog overnight. Lows in the 50s and 60s. Mostly sunny and warm tomorrow. Highs in the 70s and 80s. It is 67 degrees in Los Angeles right now. KFI is the talk station that does live local news. On the hour, on the half, and when it breaks, at 6.06, I'm Chris Little, KFI News. 1-800-449-8686. Phil Henry Show. Um... Hospitals are preventing lawsuits by banning video cameras in delivery rooms. Uh, maybe we all know somebody who's, you know, had a baby... And the husband went into the delivery room to videotape the blessed event. I know I do. And I will also say this, and I say this with all due respect, it's not a tape I want to see, you know, anytime soon. And I'm sure it's not one that they want to show me. It's something that they did uh, for themselves, but they, you know, made it clear to me, hey, Phil, you know, when so-and-so had a baby, and I went in there with a camera. Well, a lot of hospitals are preventing lawsuits by banning those video cameras. Because they're afraid um, that things are going to be on, t on tape that are not understood by, uh, you know, lay people. Now, we have a guy here who has a place called Scientific uh, Research Center, or scientific, scientific Test Centers. He's with Crisco, which is an uh, entrepreneurial company. And he's on the line with us from Redondo Beach. Uh, his name is Chris Norton. Chris, how are you? Welcome to the Phil Henry Show. I'm real good, Phil. Thanks for having me on. Now, you guys videotape births, and you videotape gynecological exams, is that right? That is, that's exactly right, Phil, to try and um, put aside these uh, fears of lawsuits a lot of these hospitals have. Um, and so, you, so in other words, by you guys videotaping the births, and by you guys videotaping the gyne gynecological exams, uh, you're, you're going to assure the hospitals that they won't get sued? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not assuring that they won't get sued, but we're doing it in a more professional way, um, and we're doing it in a way. Of, uh, this is this is more for the woman not to feel intimidated by the doctor, and more for the woman not to feel like she's being taken advantage of by the hospital. So, so you're not there for the hospital. You're there for the for the family. Yes, sir. Um, we're there for the. Uh, we say family with the the husband and wife. Right, yeah, the husband's too is also there too, yeah. But we're there for the woman. Um, uh, Tell me about how this all came about. Well, my business manager Lance Germain and I were talking about women and the need, um, you know, the the the, the, the need of cell health services that they were getting, and, the, and and we were wondering how we could create a comfortable environment for women in their examinations, breasts or gynecological or childbirth. Uh, and we're currently uh, fighting this ban on videotaping births uh, in effect in hospitals around the country because with the video, birth is a happy moment, but also can protect the mother from malpractice. And oh, okay. So you are fighting this ban on videotaping births. Yes, we are. But we also want to expand so that in the very beginning pr pr procedures, we can protect the mother. That includes videotaping the gyne gynecological exams 
and uh, uh, you know a series of them. Uh, you don't know what the doctor's going to do, and also if there is any physical abnormality, we can pick it up on a videotape. Uh, Are you a doctor? No, sir, I'm not. Is your friend there, your business manager, Lance Germain, is he a doctor? Uh, he is not technically a doctor, but he had worked, uh, he's done male nurse work. Uh, I'm an artist, Mr. Henry. Uh, and what do you mean by an artist, and why, why should we have an artist? Why would anybody want to hire an artist, a man hire an artist, for instance, to go in and videotape his wife's uh, exams and, and the birth of his child? Uh, because I do have artistic eye, uh, because I... I can put the women at ease. I can videotape the entire medical procedure that she goes through during her pregnancy and do it with a zoom lens, uh, also a microscopic lens. We can pick up what a doctor misses. And it well, what, you got a zoom and a microscopic lens. Yes, sir. So we get right up there, and you can see everything. And doctors don't want us in there because they, don't, they know we'll pick up stuff, and they're always trying to push the camera out of the way. And we have... Okay. I, I just want to interrupt you. Yes, sir. Are you in it? You're you're in there when a woman is getting her gyne gynecological. Is that how you pronounce it, by the way? Gynecological. Yes, sir. Okay, you're in there while she's getting that exam. Yes, I am. And you're telling me that the camera is so close that the doctor's pushing it away. Well, uh, well I have a currently. I ha is that is that what you're saying? Well, Mr. Henry, currently I have a claim against the doctor, um, Billman, who uh, our lens got caught in the speculum, and uh, what is that? That's that's the. Uh, uh, okay, I'm finding out now. What is it, Melissa? It's the, the, the thing that opens a woman up. What do you mean your lens got caught in it? Because it was a faulty speculum, and it snapped closed and caught the lens and broke a lens. So, uh, Wait. Yeah? All right. Um, okay, so you've got a camera in the examination room, and it's so close that the speculum snapped and caught the lens. Yes, sir. Okay, is that hygienic? Uh, Mr. Henry, what we're doing this is for the women, okay? Um, and he, 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 uh, he closed it shut before I had the lens out of the way. And it, no, I know what the doctor did, but... Uh, we're, but we're doing this for the women. The women can pick up a copy of the tape. Uh, this is the view of a woman's body and how it changes. A video diary, if you will, of how a woman's body changes during nine months of pregnancy. And we're trying to help the women with that. And okay, yeah, but you got that camera so far, so close, that when the speculum uh, broke, you say, it, it broke your lens? Yeah, it smashed our lens to pieces. This guy had that thing torqued out. I mean, I looked at it and said, man, what kind of torque you use on that? And he was very rude. Uh, he said, I don't know why you're in here. Uh, did you have the permission of the woman? Yes, sir, I did. I had her permission. And so he let us in. He was very rude. He didn't understand. That's how the woman wanted us to be in there. And I tried to get the camera up in there so we could get a good shot of it, of, of her, of her, you know, uh, you know, her private area. And he, he, he was all in the Zam. He was very rude. And it, well, if I'm a doctor, I got to be honest with you, Chris. If I'm a doctor, uh, Lance Germain's here too, by the way. Want to explain? No, I don't want to talk to Lance Germain, your business manager. I want to talk to you. If I'm a doctor trying to give an exam and I got a guy over my shoulder with a camera. And, and we, well, we, we had the right... And you got lights, too? Yeah, we had some Klieg lights. You got Klieg lights, you got a camera, you got uh, makeup. What else? We have some makeup, yeah, for the woman. You're kidding. I was just joking. No, yes, sir, we do. So a woman's in there getting a gyno exam. You got a, a camera, lights, makeup, and the speculum broke, snapped back, and broke the lens on your camera. Yes, sir. And what I am asking from that doctor is the cost of lens... And the and the freedom to go back into there and to redo that film, because it, well wait her exam's over. But I'd like her to take it again so we can get some good, you know, shots of it. And right now, all right, yeah, Chris, I want to give the number here one eight hundred four four nine eight six eight six. Chris Norton here. He is with a company called Scientific Test Centers. They videotape. Uh, a woman throughout her entire nine months of pregnancy, starting with her early uh, uh, exams by her obst obst you know her her uh, obst obstetrician. Uh, yeah, I, I know how to say that if you want me to. Yeah, that's fine. I got it out, man. Um, and by the way, uh, Scientific Test Centers is a subsidiary at Crisco, uh, which stands for my first name and our company, Crisco. And okay, that's that's good. And um, and you're out there trying to break the ban on videotaping births. Yes, I am. Uh, and you have this legal problem with this doctor, which I, I, I got to tell you, I understand the doctor's side a little bit. If you've got a camera while he's trying to give a woman an exam like that, and you've got a camera over his shoulder bugging him, 
naturally, I think he's going to push you out of the way. Well, he broke a very expensive lens, Mr. Henry. And what we're doing is for the women. We're not doing this for the doctor. We're doing it for the women. And we're doing it in such a way so they can have a video library of their entire gynecological exams. Uh, we relax the women. Uh, if they want, they can wear a camisole or stockings. Uh, we do a very, very interesting way of doing this. When the women are getting their gynecological exams, they don't like wearing those uh, hospital gowns. And I, Wait a minute, you said camisoles? Yes, that's, that's correct, Mr. Henry. That's right. And you got them wearing camisoles and stockings while they're laying their spread. Yes, sir, I'll tell you why. Because it, I mean, it, just, it sounds... No, I'll tell you why. Because it relaxes them. Uh, they can wear a crossless underwear because the hospital gown upsets a lot of women. Uh, you know, the master we have to keep to review to make sure we can pick up anything that a woman might miss, but they do get a copy. And uh, Where do you keep this master? We keep it at the center. And where's the center? Uh, right now, the center is located in my apartment. And, uh, okay. Um, but all you have to do is tell your doctor that you want me to film your, like, girl exam, and we'll film your girl, you know, film their private, the doctor looking at your private area. Why would any woman want to do this, Chris? I mean, why would any woman want to want to want a camera in the room while she's having a gynecological exam, or have a stranger in there? Because, Mr. Henry, I can relax women. I'm I'm very uh, handsome. I'm, I have a nice manner about me. Women are relaxed around me. They always relax around me, and um, I have a great. I mean, excuse me for saying, but I do have a great bedside manner. And I have you videotaped other women? We did start with that one woman, but the speculum broke my lens. But okay, have you videotaped others? Uh, we have some interest, yes, sir. And uh, okay, so women would want to do this. They'd want you to come in and videotape their gyne gynecological exams, so they have a video record of their pregnancy. And because you're a very comforting presence, well, I'm very comforting presence. Uh, women are very comforted by me. All right, Chris, will you hang on? I'd be happy to. And Lance Germain's here. I, I understand about Lance. I don't know that I. I, I think we'll talk with you. 1-800-449-8686. 1-800-449-8686 is our number. Uh, this is Chris Norton from uh, Scientific Test Centers. They go in with video equipment and videotape a woman's gynecological exams, all of the exams that she goes through during her pregnancy, sonogram, everything else, uh, right up to the birth of the child. They videotape this so you have a video record. Um, he's done one. Apparently the lens was so close to the woman that the speculum broke the lens when it uh, when he released it. I don't know. I asked him, why would any woman want this? He says, because he's good-looking and he knows how to relax women. 1-800-449-8686, Phil Hendry Show. KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. You can talk to Jesus Christ one of two ways. You can cup your hands together, close your eyes, and start yapping. Or you can email him at jesuschrist at kfi640.com. Whichever method you choose, tune in this Monday night at 9, because Jesus Christ is coming to KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. Good afternoon, I'm Mike Nolan. KFI in the sky. Things are finally on the band down the 91 Rorex on the 60 freeway eastbound. Now, it's still pretty busy most of the way from the 605 out to Central, but at least it's getting better. And, of course, they've reopened the 10 eastbound, so that'll take some of the pressure off the 60 on your way out toward Ontario. Heavy traffic on the 91 eastbound. It's been slow to and beyond the 710 on the 605. Busy on the southbound Long Beach freeway down past the 105 and the northbound 710. Heavy approaching the Santa Ana freeway. It's been a slow northbound Santa Ana, northbound Golden State freeway up through the east LA interchange. Busy again, North Band 5 up beyond the Hollywood Freeway in the San Fernando Valley, staying kind of sticky up toward the 118. KFI is the talk station with the most frequent traffic reports. Mike Nolan, KFI in the sky. At Albertsons, from now until October 15th, when you spend $25 and buy any Coca-Cola soft drink, you'll receive $5 off at Disneyland Passport. See store for details. Albertsons, it's your store. Have you noticed something? It seems that just about anywhere you go these days, everybody's got a Ford. No, no kidding. Look at the guy next to you. Probably driving an Explorer. Oh, nice, huh? Guy behind you, I'm thinking F-Series, maybe a Ranger. And that shiny black SUV you're staring at has Expedition written all over it. See, Ford has more trucks and SUVs in its lineup than any other maker. Year after year, they continue to outsell their competition. And nowhere else is it more true than right here in Southern California. And with the 2000 Mustang and the 2000 Taurus and the new Focus, Ford cars are going to be, well, what everybody's talking about next. 
So, if you're one of those people not driving a Ford, your Southern California Ford dealer can fix that, you know. Call me a show off, but I'm going for the excursion. <laughs> Hi, this is Phil Hendry from MasterServe. We're involved in all kinds of remodeling and refurbishing at our house. And, man, when you're dealing with contractors and uh, craftsmen, you really appreciate it when you're dealing with people who are professionals. I mean, really like what they do and do it well. I have watched the work of the people at MasterServe firsthand. These guys come in, they take out all that old, bad, rotten, smelly, galvanized steel water piping, and they put in clean, new copper pipes that never rust or corrode. Their crews are clean, their crews are fast, and they're professional. And the cost for Master serves quality repiping is half the price a plumber would charge for the same job. You get a plumber, and this guy is going to, I mean, he's going to take it to the wall. Not Master Serve. And their entire installation is guaranteed for life. Now, I'd like you to do this for me. I want you to be one of the next 20 callers to call them up. Be one of the next 20 callers to do something nice for, be, for your house and for your pocketbook and get a 20% discount for MasterServe. Plus, MasterServe will give you a whole house water filtration system absolutely free. Call MasterServe now, 1-800-806-7374, 1-800-806-REPIPE. Wouldn't it be amazing if instead of getting one of what you want, you got two? Here you go, sir. Two juicy steaks. Cool. Hey, here are the keys to your two new cherry red Corvettes. Awesome! Well, Jenkins, I'm going to give you two expense accounts. Woohoo! Well, maybe you can't get two of everything. Oh. But you can get two Delta Sky Miles for every dollar you spend. Introducing the new Delta Sky Miles credit card from American Express. It's the first card where you always earn double miles at supermarkets, drug stores, gas stations, home improvement stores, the U.S. Postal Service, on wireless phone bills, and even Delta ticket purchases. Hey, getting to this tropical island with double Delta Sky Miles sure was easy. Waiter, give me a daiquiri. Oh, and make it a double? To apply, call 1-800-SKY-MILES. The Delta Sky Miles credit card. Always double miles. Terms and conditions apply. This is KMI Forty. AM 640. More stimulating talk radio. One eight hundred four four nine eight six eight six. This is the Phil Hendry Show. Chris Norton from Scientific Test Centers is with us, where they're trying to fight the ban some hospitals have instituted against videotaping births, and they've done that because they want to avoid lawsuits. No, that's right, Phil. And we are standing with mothers, and we're standing with the husbands. Uh, we believe it's a woman's right to videotape the birth of her child, uh, and we will do it in such a way as to protect the woman from malpractice. We do it in such a way as to protect the woman from the, the negligence of the doctor. And it, yeah, but you're, you're proposing to videotape the woman not only the birth, but all of her gyno exams. Uh, well, we, we allow women to pick a costume to, to wear to their, um, you know, the exam they do on their vagina. And it, okay, it's called a gynecological exam. I want you to stick to that, okay? I'm sorry. Uh, Go ahead. But we do, uh, we have some fun things, too. We have a Xena warrior princess costume. We have a little doll girl dress. We have a mermaid outfit, stuff like that. And it, what, what, all the mermaid outfits and everything aside, okay, you have them in that? Well, it, it relaxes women, and it makes them feel less scared of stuff. And also, uh, again, this is a record of their pregnancy from, the, from conception almost all the way to the, to the birth of their child in case they want to uh, sue someone. All right, in case they want to sue the doctor. Well, in case there's malpractice. All right, here is Huntington Beach on the Phil Hendry Show. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Um, frankly, I, I think it's disgusting to have somebody uh, do that exam. And uh, to me, I think he's, it's like it's almost like it's like a pornographic type of thing that, that for him to... Uh, I, I don't know what's pornographic about protecting a woman's rights against well, doctors. Well, you know, you, you know, you're saying, well, we'll dress him up in a little mermaid outfit oh, I'm just or saying, stuff I'm like saying, that. that. That's, that's disgusting. No. You know, I, I can imagine uh, having you in there. And, and if I was a doctor, I would, I would say... I would refuse the service to the woman. Say, you know what? I can't have this gentleman in here. I can't do my. Well, you already, uh, uh, Chris. You already had a doctor who did not want you there. This, this is a doctor who is very adamant he wants in there, but the woman didn't want in there. Okay, but see, what I'm saying is, is that if for a doctor, I would tell the woman, you know what? I can't do your exam because well, I. Well, okay, so that basically means. Okay, that basically means the doctor is saying, okay, you do not have rights. I don't want you to record what's going on. Uh, in case you want to exercise those rights, you will not have any evidence. 
Uh, and I think that's wrong. And I think that uh, Chris Coe Incorporated feels is wrong, too. I think that women should be allowed. And the reason why we dress them up mermaid or whatever you want is so you're relaxed. Oh, no. I could not be relaxed. I feel like it's almost like since you, your company's in your apartment that you'd be taking it home with you and watching it later on. Chris, You know, um, that's the way I, you get your kids. Uh, <laughs> well, Mr. Ernie, I don't see what's funny about uh, uh, the rights of women being stripped away. Well, no, you just... know what? The other thing, too, is when the mic your Microsoft thing broke inside, <coughs> did it break inside the women? Was she at no, risk? Ma no, ma'am. She was not at risk. What happened was the speculum broke outside of her body. You had the camera so close to this woman that then when the speculum broke, it broke the lens of your camera, man. I mean, that is really close. Yeah, it is. We, uh, we got some good shots. Well, God, I, I would just... I think it's disgusting. And, ma'am, the only time that we watch the tapes is when we're editing them. How do, you, how do I know that? Uh, because, I mean, you, okay, it's your, uh, your, I, your, your, your apartment. Why would I your, lie to you? Why would I lie to well, you? Well, I'm... I, you know, would I, would I end up on the internet later on of, you know, showing no, this film? No, that would be disgusting. Bill? That would be wrong. Yeah, but I think that it's disgusting that you would have these women, you know, got a makeup artist and, you know, wear this little mermaid yeah, outfit, I, have your thing, legs spread open. It's, you, get, you know, it's... it's Ma'am, you get the Crisco guarantee? You get the guarantee? Oh, uh, well, you know, I just can't imagine that because it, that's a I, very I personal know. thing. Yes, and, and it, let, let me point out as well, Chris, um... You know, you may be a great guy, and you may mean well to relax, as you say, the women. But a woman laying on a on a on a on a, on a gurney, getting a, a, an exam like that, wearing a mermaid outfit. I mean, you know, all the time it would take her to get into that outfit, she'd be done with a freaking exam. Yeah. Huh? It is. You know, I, what, I will say this, and I know there's an old saying. You know what? Until you get up on a gurney and have your legs spread apart and have some microphone go up somewhere. Oh, ma'am, I'm going to put a microphone up there. It's a camera. Okay, but still, or a camera, whatever it is, it's still, it's just that I just can't even imagine something like that. Even if we gave you a choice of wearing a And you've only had one woman do it? Doesn't that tell you something? No, ma'am, but well, I'm on Mr. Henry's show right now to let people, let women know that this, this is being offered. And again, uh, we're protecting your rights. And if you get into a, a cocktail, uh, like a French maid outfit or something, well, I don't know what's... Well, see, I, I think her laughing at that means she doesn't know what's happening to women in this country. Uh, and, you know what? I do. You know, I don't think but you I know think, what's happening I, to women in this country. No, I think you're just... You know, that's just like destroying women, you know. Of, like, oh, I just can't even imagine. Well, I mean... Okay, so she's going to get into a French maid outfit. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. You know... <laughs> You know, it's a costume party when you go to the gynecologist. Um, I, mean, I, I don't you know. know. I could send you a picture of me um, because I am very good looking, and it, you would be very well. Oh, okay, so so that that gives you the right to come in there and no, it uh, doesn't put give me the right. a little costume. No, it doesn't give me the right. That. It doesn't give me the right. But I think once you saw me and you saw how good looking I was, you'd be more relaxed. Yeah, I don't think so. And you wouldn't be. <laughs> No, you know, I, how about uh, we have a flapper girl outfit from the 20s? Oh okay, that's that's God. great, man. Thank you, ma'am, for your call. These outfits, sounds like that's, that's mistake number one. I don't know. Well, we don't think, uh, Crisco doesn't think it's making a mistake, uh, Mr. Henry. I think that we're making uh, some strides and are trying to relax the women. All right. Um, do you have a speech impediment, by the way? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, uh, no, I, do, I, I have an uh, uh, unusual way of saying uh, certain things. Why? N nothing. You say relaxed. You mean relaxed? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the word. Okay, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Harrisburg on the Phil Henry Show. Hello. Hi, yes. Yes. Hi, I'm a pregnant woman, and I am recently have been up to uh, six months of pregnancy, and I've only had one internal done, and he's totally inaccurate because um, most of my visits have been external visits where they just check the baby's fetal movement using a monitor. And they do not do any internals at all? Well, uh, that one, is, it depends on your pregnancy, okay? Yeah, That's yours. I work at a hospital, and I know what they do. Well, a lot of women need to go in for more than one. It yeah, depends I on go, how I go every, complicated it is. I go to visit my doctor every two weeks. Can I ask you a question, ma'am? This mm -hmm. is Phil Henry. Sure. How close does a camera have to be to you for the speculum to break a camera lens? It has to be in turn inside your vagina because... Um, oh, my God. The speculum goes no, all the way no. in, and there's okay, only about... I say there's about God. Half of your thumb that comes. Uh, I think that that that's very up. wrong what this woman's trying to do. I think it's very wrong what she's saying. No, uh, the no. speculum is inside you. There's a little metal uh, clamp. You that's have a out camera there. shoved up in there. Uh, first of all, uh, the woman did not find it unpleasurable. We call the lens the fisheye lens. Uh, what is what is the fisheye lens? A fisheye lens inside you. He's talking about uh, that would have to be inside you. Well. 
I am, you know, I don't know what you want to say. I, I think, first of all, get rid of the mermaid outfit and get rid of the stick and the lens all the way up in there, okay? Uh, Sir, we're trying to protect the rights of women. I think what you're doing is an injustice to a lot of women. Plus, I am good looking, ma'am. Ma'am? Yes. I am good looking. Yeah, you're about as good looking as my toad that's laying outside the dead car here. Huh? You're about as good looking as the dead toad that's outside my car. Oh. Yeah. Okay. If my husband was. Uh, there I hung up on her. Thank you. Okay. 1-800-449-8686. I want you to start thinking about these costumes. Yeah, this is the Phil Henry Show. Carell and Andrew. So we shouldn't drive cars. We shouldn't fly in airplanes. We shouldn't go on boats. We shouldn't leave our house. Carell and Andrew. Tonight at 7. Proportionately, you know, all of those things are safer than going to an amateur football 12 game. 12 people died out of how many people play sports? Carell and Andrew. KFI AM 640. More stimulating talk radio. Free show from Scientific Test Centers in Crisco uh, is Chris Norton, and he and Lance Germain claim to be fighting a ban on videotaping births in hospitals that has been instituted by a lot of hospitals across this country. Many hospitals are not allowing husbands to videotape the births of their children because um, they sometimes result in lawsuits. You are fighting this ban, uh, Mr. Norton, by videotaping not only the birth. You're offering to videotape all of the gynecological exams as well. And, uh, and you're also offering to relax the women during these gynecological exams by dressing them up in mermaid outfits. You say because you're good looking that this is going to make it all okay. And I, I, you've heard a lot of women tell you that it doesn't. Well, Mr. Harry, first of all, I want to mention that we have three packages, okay? We have the premier package, which is one ninety nine ninety nine. That's the birth. Like, You'll videotape just the birth? That's right. Uh, the gold package... We, uh, for three fifty nine ninety nine, we videotape the exams and the birth, but we do have our platinum package uh, where we will, if you want, okay, and you don't have to if you don't want to, but we will videotape the conception. And a, oh, come on, man. No, well, I mean... You're videotaping the couple getting it on. Yes, sir. Uh, the conception, all the exams, and the birth, and the price of that's kind of interesting. Uh, it's... Six hundred ninety-nine, sixty-nine, and that's just kind of our way of your way of what? Well, so you say it's not sexual, but you just made it. I know, but I mean, it was just, it's just a little thing. So you are you have the premier package, the gold package, or the platinum package, where you'll videotape the conception. That's correct. Why would a woman want you videotaping the conception of that child if she's protecting herself against a lawsuit? That's that's a good question, but you don't know what her husband, you know. I mean, suppose they were supposed to have no baby, and he slipped it in without putting a rubber on it. She's going to want to know that. Okay? Well, she's pregnant. I guess she figured it out. Yeah, but it could be a boyfriend that she has. I don't know. Do you hear what you're saying, sir? Mr. Henry, I have... No, do you just hear what you're saying? A boyfriend? I mean... Mr. Henry, I have been... I'm very good looking, and I do help women. So, okay, let, let me just let the women speak here. Caro, New York, on the Phil Henry Show. Hello. Hi. Yes, sir, ma'am, hi. You are disgusting. Who what did I do? What did I do? Who would want to look at you? And if uh, I happen so, to be very handsome. Yes, yeah, you're so handsome. Why don't you go find your own crotch to look at? Uh, you know something? What we do is a. Uh, how old are you? 15. Oh, she's just a kid. Get her out of here. No, I don't no, you think are, so. You are a little young. Here is uh, Corona on the Phil Henry Show. See, I got standards. Yeah, you have oh, well, standards. You That's know... good. Well, I'm not going to talk to a 15-year-old child, Mr. Henry. You put her on the air. Well, I didn't know that she was... I, I didn't do that. You did that. I understand, and I took her right off the air. Go ahead, Corona. Yes, um, I'm not 15 years old, and I think what you do is disgusting. And first of all, that breathing. Every time a lady gets on the phone... No, ma'am, I have a... I'm happens. sorry, I happen to have a sinus I... problem. Uh, am, I, am I not allowed to have allergies, too? Is that also something I'm not allowed to have? Well, apparently your allergies only seem to come about when some lady is talking. No, also, ma'am. Also, I think what you no, do ma'am. is pornographic. No. Uh, Are these ladies me, how do you getting it's the original copy of the film? I'm sorry? Or do you keep it? What was your question? Are these ladies getting an original copy of the film? Or do you keep this? Chris? Um, first of all... I have a right to keep it because I'm putting out so the money for it. So that way you can it. go ahead and sell it. 
that leaves it completely open for you to sell well, let me, and let me exploit ask you these ma'am. women ma'am. that you supposedly make feel comfortable ma- in costumes. First of all, the master tape has to be kept for insurance purposes. That's number one. Number two, number oh, two, number me, two, sir. number I'm two. Also, I'm what, in the medical how, field. Um, how, I don't think so. Wait a minute. Who wants to buy some woman getting a gynecological exam? Who's going to buy that? Sir, you gotta be there are me. a lot That's of really sick sick. people out there, well, and I, as well as I cannot believe you filmed the conception. Uh, if that, they want that, if they want that, is all I'm saying. And, Why would you thing, want that? I can't believe these people want that, but oh well. Who knows what you're dealing with? But another thing is this that's, thing about you being so good looking. You know what, guys? That's, that's our platinum if package. <laughs> If what? I went and did scrap and you grabbed can't say every that. other yeah, man. Please watch your language, ma'am. I'm sorry. And grabbed I, I every the other man so I can make an annual and continue to say I was good looking. Excuse me, sir. My looks have nothing to do with making somebody feel comfortable. Well, I, I'm not doing the grabbing, ma'am. On yourself. I'm not doing the grabbing. The doctor is. I am videotaping for insurance purposes and the protection of the women's. What is it with you being behind a camera and your look that has to do with it? Because of the fact that, yes, I am very good looking. I relax the women so that they're not uptight. And I do suggest they get into lingerie. How is it that your looks relax a lady or Uh, a woman? Well, you know what? How is it that your looks can relax them? Well, you know what? Uh, I guess that's just something you'd have to see to believe, but I am very good looking. And once you saw me, uh, I have had women say this to me, and I'm not trying to be crude. (laughs) Okay, but they have said when they see my face, it melts their panties right off. Okay, so How that, does that, that's, that's not relaxing. Them. That's not These relaxing a woman. Okay, women in Ernie, for exams. Mr. Ernie, How I, is it? No, hold on for a minute, Mr. Ernie. I've seen Mr. Ernie. Off is just exploiting these no, women. No, Mr. Ernie, I've um, seen pictures. Your, Mr. Ernie, I'm I'm sorry, I want to say I want to say something here, Mr. Ernie. I've seen pictures of you. Making them comfortable is that your way of having your way with them? No, and you know something, lady. Uh, guess what? If you are going to have a baby, I don't want to videotape it. You know, right. sir, I wouldn't want you to videotape it. Well, but you're, you're out of luck now anyway because I won't do it. Thank you. Uh, no, thank <laughs> you for calling so I'd know not to videotape you, skank. Okay. Oh, you know what? You know something, I'm sure man. You're oh, well, as you're all dog now. ugly as can be. Yeah, no, but I, I'm very good looking. And a lot you of know what? I believe really you have a very c- big complex problem. No, I have no complex. Um, I try to protect the women. And of course, women. you are only on the radio. What? And now it seems like your breathing has come back. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. You know, I, I come on here to protect the rights of women. I'm being laughed at. I'm being made fun of. That's fine. I, I'm here to protect the rights of women. You haven't told us yet how you're going to protect their rights. Videotaping the conception, getting into lingerie, sticking a lens so far up there that the sec- that whatever that thing's called breaks and busts the lens. I don't know how that's protecting women. Well, I'm also very good looking, and this chick will never find out. How does your look protect women? In and the medical called, field, by the way, it's called when anybody Spagulum. comes into a malpractice <clears throat> legally, your looks are not going to play the part in getting them their uh, their money or whatever. Okay, ma'am, you've made some good points. What is that? I have a sinus problem. <laughs> All right, thank you for your call. Here's Santa Rosa on the Phil Hendry Show. Hello. Santa Rosa, hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am, you're on the air. Hi. I'm going to... Uh, Talk to you, and then I'll take your answer or whatever you comment off the air, okay? And can you ask that idiot that you got on to stop breathing? Uh, so, in other words, I'm not allowed to breathe either, Mr. Henry. But you're no, an but idiot. You're you breathing. Get, you're breathing in my ear. If you get back away from the phone. Okay, so I'm not allowed Just to breathe. Go, go ahead hey, and stick somewhere else uh, not in my ear, uh, idiot. Gra- hey, Grandma, people yeah. have to breathe to stay alive. Anyway, I'm calling you to but I watch your show all the time. Listen, I can't even talk. Now, knock it off. You I watch, listen to you your wa- show all hey, the time, really and you I'm watch absolutely show all the time. surprised that you have some jerk that probably does nothing but pornography or can't function well, look, it, without the aid of any no, of this other stuff. There's no hope that I'm going to videotape you. You're but too old. But I would love to too old, have you have a show regarding women and how to look out for themselves and be careful about people like him. And being a nurse, he's full of it because I don't think he's allowed to do a hospital to do what he says. He just wants to get us all riled up over here. Thank you very much. And I'd like to hear your comments. 
on the radio. Bye. my comment grandma it would take a case of astroglide to get the camera okay that's all we need wait a minute that's all we need we don't need any more of your insults 1-800-449-8686 his company is called uh, scientific tests and their number is 213-251-3189 if you should be so foolish as to want to have this guy uh videotape uh you know whatever it is and i think and i think that it's just a really sad can i have that music what music? The kind of one. Yeah, that one. I because you didn't play it last hour for the other guy. That's the highway. But get the highway patrol music off. One eight hundred four four nine eight six eight six. Phil Henry Show. KFI AM six forty. More stimulating talk radio. Tim and Neil talk to the most important people in this country, like presidential campaign advisor James Carville. Mr. Carville, big fan. I love what you do. I'm curious. Do you have a big penis? That's what's in all the papers. Tim and Neil. Do I have <laughs> got ten and a half? Got <laughs> ten and a half. Tonight. 1-800-449-8686. This is the Phil Hendry Show. We have a late-breaking report from uh, uh, Bob Bacon. Bob Bacon in the uh, news helicopter. What's going on, Bob? Hello, Bob. Are you there? Right here, Phil. Uh, we have uh, a lot of stuff going on here in the South Bay area as we circle over a neighborhood in the South Bay. We're also circling over a couple of neighborhoods in uh, Long Beach as well as in Orange County. And some spontaneous street demonstrations have broken out. People are out in the street, and they are celebrating. The news just came down, and we had the news, of course, uh, broken on this radio station just moments ago that Rosie O'Donnell is retiring in the year 2001. And uh, as you can well imagine, people have taken to the streets in a celebratory mode here. Uh, the long, dark night is over. The living hell that we have all been subjected to is through. And the relief is palpable on the faces of not only the adults, but the children as well, as they stream into the streets. The news that Rosie O'Donnell will definitely be retiring in about a year or two has caused just a massive outpouring of thanks. Just a big thank you, Rosie, for retiring. Uh, we are going to continue to monitor the situation, Phil. But as you can well imagine, uh, and I'm just speaking personally for myself, oh, thank you, God, that uh, Rosie will be retiring by a year. And, uh, excuse me, a little bit of lunch I had. Anyway, will you wrap it up? All right, so anyway, we are uh, here, and we'll be going to uh, Dave Jones on the street who had some comments from the people. What do you think about it? Well, I think great. Uh, this is holy Christ, it's great. Well, I've always liked Rosie, but... I mean, you know, one year of that show, come on. Mike Douglas is gone. We didn't need to revisit it. There's just some of the comments that Dave Jones got from some of the people out on the street. So there is a lot of joy here tonight, a lot of people smiling. Just, I see people randomly embracing each other, putting flowers into the barrels of a police's, policemen's uh, service revolvers, just hugging a stranger on the street. It's like the end of the Second World War. It's like Woodstock. Rosie O'Donnell is retiring. We're not going to make this joke any further. Broadcasting live from the South Bend. Bob Bacon. So let me show news. Okay, Bob. So, Bob, uh, there's the word spontaneous street demonstrations breaking out. Uh, Rosie O'Donnell is retiring. So great. So that's the second time. The first one was when Br uh, Barbara Streisand said she was leaving. And, of course, they almost had a freaking riot after that one. Uh, just uh, strangers hugging strangers. Now, I want to thank a fine guy who sent us a big box of stuff, Paul Voxland in Irvine. And Paul works for Metrovox Snacks. I don't know if that's a real company name. I, I would, if I had a snack company, man, why would I name it Metrovox? I, if I had a, if I had a, uh, like if my name was Chris, I wouldn't start a company called Crisco. If I was selling audio equipment, guitars, speakers, amplifiers, maybe I'd call it Metrovox. Anyway, Paul, thank you for that big box of stuff. We got 
peanuts, you know, like beer nuts, and there was those uh, mustard-flavored uh, uh, pretzels and huge vats of jelly beans and large bags of caramel corn and uh, kind of an interesting little Coca-Cola and uh, uh, Reese's peanut butter cup and uh, Nestle's crunch bar display. Uh, all of that there in the uh, box that he sent to us. And all he wants is some advice. Uh, he, he, he writes, I would like a bit of help in exchange for this box of goodies that my company makes. I have a son that I think might be interested in doing voiceovers. I heard you speak of it on a previous show. He is like me and has no talent except for having fun, teasing people, and enjoying life. Oh, yeah, by the way, we got a jelly bean time capsule, too. He is like me, uh, has no talent except for having fun, teasing people, enjoying life. Could you, could you possibly give me some advice to pass on to him as what he needs to do to get started? If not, thanks anyway, and I still remain a loyal fan, Paul Voxlin. Well, uh, <coughs> anyway, first of all, don't get lung cancer. That's the first thing you want to do, young uh, Jonathan. I think that's his son's name. Don't get any lung or throat cancer. So probably not smoking is the first thing you want to start. Then what I would do is make a tape of you doing a variety of different character voices, different straight reads, different uh, dramatic reads and funny reads. Make a tape of about two to three minutes in length doing a lot of different kinds of reads of commercials and a lot of different kinds of reads of news and a lot of different kinds of reads of, uh, of maybe a little dramatic character parts, things like that. About three minutes long. Then you're going to want to find yourself a voiceover agent. And there are many of those working here in the Los Angeles area as well as across the country. And the voiceover agent is then the person that will send you out on auditions and uh, hopefully one of those auditions will bear fruit. You'll be hired to do whatever voiceover gig you want to do. I don't do voiceovers anymore because I don't dig uh, I, I don't dig doing commercials. I used to do them. I used to do commercial reads back you know, like ten years ago, and uh, part and parcel of you know like leaving disc jockey work and and actually going and, and living in Atlanta, I made a, dis a conscious decision. I was no longer going to do commercials. And uh, I remember when I when I moved to Atlanta. I had a voiceover agent here who called me and said, do you want to do any, there's some people, or, do you want to do a spot? No, I don't want to do any of that crap anymore because I wasn't having any fun doing it necessarily. At least, you know, like for a living. I'm, I like the sponsors that we have on our show. I'm happy to do uh, uh, commercial endorsements for them. But, you know, going out and doing commercial reads as a way of life, I would rather suck exhaust. I just didn't want to do that. Uh, but the other side of voiceover work that I do enjoy is doing cartoons. And uh, I've done a few King of the Hills. I did a Futurama. And that's a lot of fun. And I hope I do more. But I will understand if I don't. Because there's so many talented people in this town. And that's really cool. And I've worked with some great people. Um, you know, one of these days I'm going to walk into a voiceover session. There'll be a guy there with a voice box. Just, I, how are you? Okay. Anyway, so that's my advice, Paul. And uh, just get a little Jonathan there uh, cranking. Have we no time for our flashback? We do? We don't. Ah, uh, crap. We could do it anyway and just cut it in half. Now nah, let's wait till Monday. We had a really neat flashback for you. You want to go ahead and do it and just cut it off? That's the music I picked. Let's hear the flashback. Hello. How you doing, Mom? All right, I'm don't doing be... fine, but I think you're the most unethical person I've ever heard. I'm a doctor. I've been called before the uh, American Medical Association. You should be called before the AMA. I've been commended by them.